This is actually a good time, I think, to interject a reminder that isomerism, which enantiom enantiomerism is a kind of isomerism, right? It's a relation between two molecules. So it makes no sense, for instance, to look only at one of these molecules and say it's an enantiomer. The way we talk about enantiomers is as a relationship between molecules. So we would call molecule 2 the enantiomer of molecule 1. Those two molecules are related as enantiomers. We can say because molecule 2 is chiral, it possesses an enantiomer in molecule 1, but we can't say that molecule 2 is an enantiomer in and of itself without saying what it's an enantiomer of, or at least implying what it's an enantiomer of. So now I revisit this question. How do you know if a molecule is chiral? How do you know if a molecule possesses another hand that is not the same as the original starting molecule? And if you want to convince yourself that this is a problem worth studying, consider for a second a simple molecule like um, methane. We take methane and draw it in its really three-dimensional form in its proper geometry. The mirror image of methane, if we just reflected it through a mirror and literally drew what we saw, would look something like this. We could simply superimpose these molecules by taking the mirror image and rotating it about an axis. And so these are superimposable mirror images. And the fact that they're mirror images is pretty much irrelevant because they're the same molecule. And we know that because remember that the superimposability criterion, the idea that if two molecules are superimposable, they're identical, tells us that these two are the same molecule or the same compound. So in other words, there are species out there that are both, that, um, that are either possessing this property of having a non-superimposable mirror image or not. If they don't, we call them achiral. So methane is an example of an achiral molecule, achiral molecule, excuse me. Whereas, for instance, the examples we saw on the last slide are chiral molecules. That is, they possess mirror images on which they are not superimposable. Okay, so this is a, a worthy question, and it's one worth knowing the answer to. The way you know this is, first of all, what I mentioned before about a carbon with four different ligands attached. We call that a stereocenter. You'll sometimes see it called a stereogenic center because it's a generator of stereochemistry. Really, stereo is the key word there. Stereo means space in Greek and was coined to sort of encompass all of the spatial aspects of molecules. And so anytime you see a molecule containing four different ligands attached to carbon, you know you're looking at a stereocenter in that carbon. So to give you a real-life example of this, let's take this alcohol. So you can see I've attached three different hydrocarbon groups here. We've got a methyl group up at the top. We've got an ethyl group out to the left and a propyl group to the right. And with this hydroxyl, we see this carbon has four different groups attached to it. And so we would call this a stereocenter. Oftentimes, you'll see stereocenters labeled with asterisks to show that they're sort of special stereochemically. So we would see that seeing this stereocenter, that would clue us in that this molecule is very likely to be chiral. We'll talk next time about molecules that have stereocenters that may not be chiral because they have a, have a special property. So we'll talk in more detail next time about chiral compounds and, and uh, stereo, compounds with stereocenters and how to identify those. But for now, just keep in your mind that generally if you see a stereocenter, you should start thinking about a compound as being chiral. Alternatively, if you see a molecule that doesn't possess a plane of symmetry, you know you're looking at a chiral molecule. So an interesting example of this is actually from the realm of inorganic chemistry. 
you can take a cyclopenadiene anion, which looks like this, and if you complex it with iron, what you get is sort of an interesting looking complex like so. So the iron sort of binds to the pi electrons of the cyclopenadiene ligand at the top and bottom, and we get this kind of interesting sandwich complex. If you attach ligands to this sandwich complex, then you can actually generate chirality. So for instance, this molecule does not possess a, uh, an identical mirror image, assuming rotation about these cyclopenadienes is fixed, or is hindered, I should say. This is an example of planar chirality, which doesn't require a stereocenter. You probably won't see it, but just to give you um, another example of a molecule that possesses a non-identical uh, non or a non-superimposable mirror image. So what's the most basic fundamental criterion for, uh, for chirality, I think is a perfectly valid question to ask and one that you should definitely become familiar with. The ultimate criterion is the possession of a plane of symmetry within the molecule. To see why this is, consider a molecule like propane. We've seen propane before. Let's come back to it again. Propane has within it a plane of symmetry. So if I draw that central carbon with its hydrogens in three dimensions, I get something like this. The two methyl groups are related by a plane of symmetry that sort of drawing in the best perspective I can here encompasses the two hydrogens and this central carbon. So I'll highlight everything in that plane in red here. And it splits the molecule into two equal halves, one methyl group on the left side and one methyl group on the right. The fact that it possesses this plane of symmetry, which will, you'll often see represented as sigma and called a sigma plane, tells us that the mirror image of propane is identical to it. And what you can think about is imagine just moving this mirror plane off of the molecule. As you moved it over, eventually there would come a point when the mirror plane would be actually off the molecule. But because it possesses that plane of symmetry, the result of the reflection would still be the exact same molecule. So anytime you see a molecule that possesses a plane of symmetry, you instantly know that it is achiral. That is, its mirror image is identical to itself. Any molecule that does not possess a plane of symmetry, and you can think about how a stereocenter, a carbon with four different things attached, would sort of break the symmetry of a molecule and prevent it from having a plane of symmetry. I think that's actually an interesting thing to kind of meditate on. But any molecule that does not possess a plane of symmetry is chiral, and this is the most basic criterion for chirality.